you guys, Sean C. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop video today. Today you're going to go out, see what things are on today, see what things are on sale. I know the big release today, you know, was Spider-Man Homecoming, and I know there's a number of different, you know, retail exclusive ones of that came out today. Like Target has one that I believe has a bonus disc. I don't know which one Walmart has, and then I, I believe Best Buy has a steel book. So definitely going to go and check out all those ones. I'm leaving a little bit earlier today because uh, Target, though, has one exclusive thing in there, though, and I'm definitely going to try and find this really cool thing so hopefully it's not one I have to go to like a lot of locations to try and find but we shall see the problem sometimes though with Target when you go a little earlier though is you know things are not put out yet so hopefully this stuff is out like I said I don't have to go to a million different locations to try and find this thing also the end of this video gonna have some new DVD and blu-rays uh, that you know I received a review to talk about for you guys so there's gonna be some new reviews at the end of this video so definitely stay tuned for those as well but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into Target we go but in here today though the big thing that I'm trying to find is that Stranger Things uh, it's like the Stranger Things season 1 DVD blu-ray set it's in a VHS box it's like a really like limited thing I don't know I actually don't know how limited it is I so I, I'm not sure that's why I said I'm not sure if this is gonna be one of the things I have to go to a lot of locations to try and find it but it's in this like VHS box really cool look I've actually never watched the show you know I've everyone's told me how good it is so I definitely am going to watch it. I don't know how I've never watched it, but the set that it's in is so cool looking. So, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I can find this and then I'm not going to have to go to a million locations to try and get it. That's why I said, like I said, I left a little earlier today to try and hopefully find it. Yeah, this location though is notorious, you know, not having things put out till much later in the day. So let's hope they've got it. But I do see the stand here out, you know, for Spider-Man Homecoming. And they have the only uh, Target edition here. Uh, they don't have the tags yet, so I'm going to have to look and see what the prices are for the regular one. Oh, it looks like they're 22 But this is their um, limited edition one here. It's kind of an interesting kind of cover to this. It's like a much thicker case and includes in here a bonus disc and exclusive comic book thing in here. I don't know what's on the exclusive bonus disc for this one, but I kind of like the look of this. It's sort of done almost like a scrapbook, kind of like cutout kind of style to it. Kind of a cool looking one here. Looks like the um, 4K one is $27.99. Uh, I reviewed this one in my video on the, over the weekend, the last uh, DVD Blu-ray update, but really did like this movie. I thought this was a really, really fun movie. I've liked all the Spider-Man movies, the Tobey Maguire ones, the as well as, you know, the Andrew Garfield ones. But I do see the thing here, and it looks like they actually have tons of copies of it. It's $24.99 here, but there's like a ton of them, so it doesn't look like it's going to end up being limited. But see, as like I said, it's in a VHS box, a VHS style box, and even though the bottom looks like a tape. So this is a really cool thing. I think this is the first thing, too, that I recall Netflix ever releasing, because like I, I believe they just released this themselves, because it says official Netflix merchandise on here. So that's a pretty cool thing and includes you know four uh, blu-rays and then DVD set and a collectible poster inside this one but there are some things in here though that aren't put out yet they came out in here today you know Batman uh, versus Two-Face like I see the spot for them so hopefully they'll have that it's somewhere else but like I said I'm really glad though these were actually put out and didn't have to go to a bunch of locations one of the other things too that released today was Girls Trip that was I believe one of the other big releases today down there and um, Baby Driver was it Baby Driver. I think you no, know, Baby Driver was last week. But yeah, so other than that, Girls Trip was one of the other big ones in here. But ended up, you know, picking that one up in here. Like I said, really glad that they had it and didn't have to go to a lot of locations because, like I said, this location of Target is for some reason one of those ones that quite often if I go too early, stuff isn't out, so I have to go to some other ones. And I know you can get the stuff out of the back and stuff, but sometimes it's quite a you know a pain to ask them and all that kind of stuff. But luckily enough, I did find. Into FYE we go. And in here, though, I actually found, uh, I can't believe they had this. I've been looking for this, this Pennywise one. The box is a little bit squiggled up here, but still cool to find this one in here because I've been looking for this one forever. It's one of those FYA exclusive ones. And I got to look up the price of this because I thought this was out of print and, like, really expensive, this Apocalypso, this Mel Gibson movie. So I got to check the price on this one because as far as I remember, I heard it was, like, really expensive at one point. I'm not sure if it still is, though. 
and they have in here now these ones that were originally you know only at Best Buy ones like Problem Child and Major Pain and all these ones these now have like a general release so these ones you can kind of pretty much find these ones everywhere but it's crazy they have these Three Stooges things in here for only five dollars each these whole you know volume ones I remember when I, these first came out when I paid for these so crazy to see these ones so cheap here yeah, so I ended up actually getting that thing in there. I didn't get the Apocalypse, though, because I'm like, I don't feel like I'd ever watch it. Because I remember when I saw the trailer for it years ago, it didn't look that interesting. I think it sells for like $30 or something like that. But like I said, if I'm not going to watch it, um, but I did get that Funko one in there because that, you know, the It Pennywise one, I, like I've been in there like probably three other times trying to find it, and he always kind of laughed and was like, oh no, because <laughs> I, 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 it seems like it sells online everywhere for like, 30 to 40 something dollars and some people are selling it for like even higher like I said it was a little little bit squiggled up on the box but still was glad to you know actually find it in person there you know so it was kind of cool to actually come across it in there because these things seem to be like totally impossible I know there's that other one which is like the chase version which seems to mainly be at FYE not FYE and uh, Hot Topic which you know maybe I'll come across that at some point but I highly doubt it into Walmart we go. But in here though, for the Spider-Man, it looks like they haven't put these ones out yet. I don't know for sure what their like exclusive ones are. I know there was like a Spider-Man mask, kind of one like in a mask case. I don't know if that was exclusive for them or not. I don't believe it was, I don't think. But then they have the 4K one here for $27.99 and the standard one, standard Blu-ray for $22.96. Like I said, the other one that came out today, the big release was Girls Trip. That one's $19.96. But one of the other things that released in here was this one one called um, Escape Room. When I talked about this in the update over the weekend, I actually said Escape Plan. Sometimes I'm a little like, can be really, really dyslexic, so I mix up certain things. So I really did mix up the title on this one. But this is kind of a mix of like Saw with Cube and about these friends who go to an escape room and they end up going in there. And of course, you know, the escape room is actually like real. They find that out in the very beginning and they you know they die if they screw up and they have to kind of make their way through the rooms and try and survive. But really did actually kind of get a kick out of that movie it was actually pretty well done and the other one this one I would really recommend you guys pick up it's only $14.96 for the blu-ray called shot caller by this guy who gets into an accident because he was driving drunk and his one friend dies and it's him going to prison for like a couple months but he makes some like I think he was only gonna be there like less than a year but he makes some terrible mistakes and ends up in there for years and it's all the kind of how he becomes basically a terrible criminal in prison and all the kind of terrible things he has to do to survive but really really like this one um, one of the other ones today was this one the Wild Wedding which I don't know anything about that as well as uh, Lady Macbeth and I think this one was today this one called Landline I believe and I think Justice might have been today as well and there was one other thing that came out today as well for 4k they released for 1996 uh, you know dr. Seuss's the Grinch Stole Christmas I haven't watched this one in a really long time though but I remember really liking this one a lot when you know this first came out and this past weekend uh, the two movies that I saw you know was happy death day and if you guys haven't seen it yet I did a parody for that a parody you know includes a review as well and definitely would love to hear what you guys think of that I'm gonna put a link below this video like I said if you guys have not gotten to check that one out yet uh, definitely check that out uh, the other movie that I I saw though was the Jackie Chan film uh, The Foreigner and I actually thought that was actually a really really cool movie Jackie Chan like there were some crazy scenes in him in there like setting these traps and like some crazy stuff he wasn't in the movie as much as I thought though I mean he's throughout the entire film but he's only in maybe like 50% of it because a lot more of it is Pierce Brosnan because it's about Jackie Chan's character his daughter who you know dies in this explosion and it's like you know the stuff that's the kind of long going and it doesn't happen as much anymore but in the past there's all kind of arguments between like uh, the UK and Ireland and the, all kinds of like fights between them and stuff and it's believed that someone from Ireland was involved with the with the explosion so Jackie Chan goes to like one of the head of like the security kind of thing in Ireland played by Pierce Brosnan trying to get the names of the people he's like give me the names I know you have them because you were involved with this group in the past so he's kind of going after him trying to force him to give the names Names and he's like, you know, showing what he'll do to him if he doesn't tell and stuff. It's a kind of a crazy movie, though. If you guys saw either of those movies, though, let me know, you know, what you thought of them. And this weekend, though, there's a movie coming out that looks really interesting called The Snowman. And I got sent this um, interesting promo item of this little snowman here that's heads comes off here. 
and it, like it, you know velcros on and off underneath it says you know the snowman but the the director of it directed you know the original let the right one in so it looks like kind of an interesting movie it even has a similar setting like the building that some of it's filmed at looks a little bit like the let the right one in place there's even a little note in here that says you could have saved her i gave you all the clues as well as a snowman t-shirt which says the same thing on the back for it so that's a pretty cool little promo thing here for this one hopefully this one isn't one you know that's like not open to too many theaters so it's like because it does like i looked at the trailer for it and like look like a really pretty interesting one also boo 2 medea comes out and i always like those medea movies so i'm definitely going to see that one but let me know though like i said what movies you saw uh if you got to see any movies this past weekend into best buy we go but in here, though, it doesn't look like they have any of the steelbooks left. I'll have to look over in the section, see if there's any more of these ones. Their standard edition one is $22.99. It's weird they don't have slip covers. I, I thought they did for the standard Blu-rays, but maybe they didn't. Uh, their 4Ks are $27.99. But whatever their exclusive one was, oh, yeah, the exclusive one was the steelbook. That one is $32.99. But like I said, I'll have to check over in the section, see if they have it. They do have for $17.99, though, uh, Batman versus Two-Face, though, so that's cool, though. Though they do have this one in here but over here in the section as well though I don't see any of the steelbooks either it seems like those all went really quick today it's only like 12 30 so these ones definitely went very fast today but over here though they have this horror setup thing here they have like the Saw movie collection here for $9.99 it follows the witch and this one that's like the new edition of Pet Cemetery. I believe it's the same one from the past but it's just got a different cover on it kind of like a one of this the tombstone and church on the cover and they have like phantasm remastered for $14.99 phantasm ravenger uh the purge and there's some other ones here on the back as well some other a lot of dvds and they have like the troll 2 with this kind of cover that it had uh train to busan for $9.99 the walling so a number of different other ones and i believe they just put this out as well as 976 evil for $14.99 the blu-ray of that one so anyway guys that's off this dvd blu-ray too a shop bear today luckily enough though i was able to find the one main thing i wanted to come across today you know which was the stranger things blu-ray thing and i don't know if you know some locations are going to have less copies than others but luckily enough the one that i went to had a bunch of them and you know i also got to find that funko pop one that i've been looking for and there i went in that location like probably four different times over the last month just looking to see if I, they came across it in there but it's weird these these spider-man ones definitely seem pretty limited I don't think they put out them in Walmart at all. And the Best Buy ones, though, seem to be those steelbooks that go really, really quick. If you guys, though, did come across any of them in your locations, let me know. But I guess it's one of those ones they only got a couple of them. But like I always say, guys, if you enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got here from Arrow Video is the Herschel Gordon Lewis film Blood Feast. It's now available in a single standalone edition because this was originally only available in the Herschel Gordon Lewis like giant box set, which had a number of his films in there, you know, throughout his career, like early ones, some like really like seldom seen ones and stuff like that. But this is the one, the Blood Feast was the film that really started the, you know, super gory uh, splatter type film trend. And like it was like one of the first movies too. I think it was pretty much the first to be a movie that emphasized in the gore and like and then all of his films were you know that followed had like for the most part were all like super gory insane crazy you know levels of violence and gore like it's like the big thing like i said is like super gory and like ripping out intestines and cutting off limbs and all that kind of stuff and he was who started those type of films and you know you wouldn't have a lot of the stuff we do now and you know and a lot of the stuff in the 70s as well that came to follow this without his films and there was also a lot of movies too that kind of copied like a similar styles to his you know like um especially movies that were like this one kind of like the one um andre the butcher i think it was andre the butcher or one i had a lot of different names like meat is meat or i think no the mad butcher that's another really really cool movie you don't hear about too often but that that movie is kind of similar to this and this is about a guy who's a caterer who's going around and like killing these women and collecting their body parts and he's trying to have like a blood sacrifice a blood feast of like the, the organs and like eating it and like trying to bring back this egyptian goddess it's just a very crazy crazy over-the-top 
super gory movie. Has on here though the high definition transfer of the movie. You know, looks amazing on Blu-ray. You know, Arrow did an amazing job. You know, cleaning up the film. And it also has on here a feature length audio commentary track on here, as well as the bonus uh, film on here, Scum of the Earth, a 1963 Herschel Gordon Lewis film. Uh, a whole bunch of other features on here as well. But just a great release here. And like I said, really cool that this one now is available in its own uh, single standalone edition here. The next one here from Lionsgate. And this one is going to actually be playing in some limited select theaters on October 20th. And then it's coming, you know, uh, next Tuesday out on DVD and it'll be on demand and all that kind of stuff as well. This movie stars, you know, uh, Andrew Bachelor, whose name, you know, also known as King Bach. And he was like, I believe he did Vines and I think he does YouTube videos as well. But, it, you know, he pops in a whole lot of different films. And it also stars Logan Paul is in this movie and um, Terry Crews, Mike Epps is in the movie. And this is basically um, about um, Andrew Bachelor's character who get, you know, gets a message from his father who's in prison and he says to him, oh, I have all this money hidden in this old abandoned building and, you know, my brother, you know, your uncle is getting out of jail now and he's going to go immediately get this money so you need to go there first and try and get it. And he comes to find out, though, that the, the abandoned building now is now a fraternity house and, and, you know, Andrew Bachelor's character has to figure out how he's going to get this money so he comes up with the idea of faking his way, making it look like he's a student at the school and he actually has to go and like be a pledge for this fraternity so he has to go through all the process of this fraternity and all the hazing and all the crazy stuff and like there's all kind of awkward situations going on in here as well it's kind of a fun movie here you know I, I you know, Andrew Bachelor is like did actually a really pretty good job in this and he's he's popping up in a whole lot of different movies I think he's on that new Netflix movie with Bella Thorne I saw he's in that like he's in a bunch of different stuff but kind of a fun movie here kind of has a feel to me like a little bit of like a 90s kind of movie a little bit. I don't know. I like these kind of silly, kind of crazy type stuff going on. And like I said, there was some, definitely some funny stuff going on in the fraternity and kind of the stuff they had to do when they were pledging. And then like, you know, when Terry Crews finds out, you know, that he's trying to get this money, it becomes a whole big to-do and everything. Because um, Andrew Batch's character also wants to get this money too because he wants to save the family gym. That's his main reason for it because the gym is kind of having a lot of financial problems and stuff. But it has on here though, um, one thing that's kind of cool, it has a thing called Where's the Money version where it's a picture-in-picture -picture commentary track. And I haven't seen that in years. I remember Kevin Smith did that with some of his releases. And you can kind of watch them while they're talking. And then they can also cut in, like, Terry Crews as part of the commentary as well. But you see it while you're watching. And I don't know, like I said, that has not been done in a long time. It was a cool thing to see again. Next one here from Lionsgate as well is the brand new 4K Ultra HD edition of the film Warrior. And this is a movie about you know, you know competition for MMA, and this I feel like this movie doesn't get talked about as much when it comes to these kind of like fighting type films. It's about these two brothers, and it's like Tom Hardy's car character who is you know comes from, you know, from the Marines, I think it was from the Marines, and he's kind of gotten out, and, you know, his father was like, a, you know, he had done boxing, in the, you know, or, or MMA fighting in the, and stuff like that in the past, and his father was like his coach, and his father is like now, like, um, has all kind of alcohol and drinking problems, and he really wants to try and, you know, help train him, because there's this big competition where there's this huge, you know, money that you can win for this, and he kind of really needs to get some money, but then it also is his brother, who's this teacher, and he now kind of wants to go and, you know, entering this competition as well so he's going and trying to train with someone else as well and it's kind of there's all kind of turmoil, turmoil kind of problems going because the brothers have kind of disagreements with each other and then the one brother has disagreements with his wife what like you know why he's not concentrating on being a teacher and why he wants to go and do this and then the brothers are having all kind of arguments with each other and there's problems with the father because they've had all kinds of falling outs and with the father's drinking and stuff just a really really well done a uh, drama film like a you know a character piece about these brothers and all the kind of training that they're going through and all the kind of, you know, problems that they're having in their family and stuff in here. And has on here, though, the features or on the 4K edition, you know, the discs as well as the Blu-ray, but looks great. You know, it's a very, very gritty, you know, uh, fighting film. So there's all kinds of like, you know, grit and stuff like that when they're fighting. So definitely does benefit, for, you know, with, you know, being in 4K. So if you guys have 4K though, definitely looks great. Because like I always say with 4K, the big thing is the HDR, the high dynamic range, which is all about the contrast levels and the brightness levels. But just want to let you guys know this one is available on 4K. This one here, I, I really was interested in seeing, this is from Fox. This is the 4K edition of Captain Underpants, the first epic movie, and I never had read any of the books or anything like that, so I didn't know much at all about it. 
It was one of those ones going into it, I didn't know if I was going to like it or what I was going to think of it. And I actually found it to be actually kind of a fun movie. Like, I like these kind of releases that Fox does animated. Like, I really liked um, uh, Baby... Um, a Boss Baby, I thought that was a really good one. A lot of their animated movies, I feel like, are really fun movies. They did, you know, the Peanuts movie. I don't know, I just, like, especially Boss Baby in this one. This one kind of reminded me a little bit of, um... Jimmy Neutron for some reason, I guess like with the way the story was, I don't know why it was kind of making me think of that, but it's about these two friends who draw these animated comic books, um, but in school though, they're like getting yelled at by the teacher and the principal is giving them all kinds of problems and stuff, but they, the comics they draw are the Captain Underpants stories, but their uh, principal is going to end up putting them in separate classes and they think that because of that, they're not going to be able to be friends anymore. So they get this hypnotizing ring and hypnotize the principal into believing that he's Captain Underpants. So if they snap their fingers, he turns into Captain Underpants, but if anybody throws water on him or anything like that, then he turns back into the principal. So it's all these awkward encounters of like Captain Underpants, you know, uh, kind of being crazy at the school but then if he, like, he gets wet somehow then he ends up turning back to the principal he's like why, why am i out here and there's all these like gets all mad at them and stuff like that i don't know i thought this is actually a really really fun kids movie but i feel like you know adults will kind of get a kick out of this as well like i said i know nothing about the the book series at all but i thought this was actually just a really really fun you know film has on here, though, a bunch of different features. It has 30 minutes of extras on here. Uh, has deleted scenes. Uh, Captain uh, Underpants uh, music video, you know, lyric music video, because uh, Weird Al Yankovic did the, you know, ending credits and song for this movie. But definitely check this one out. I, like I said, I thought this was a pretty fun movie. Like, I totally not what I was expecting. Now, I want to let you guys know about a couple Fox series that are available on DVD that they sent here. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, the complete fourth season. And I think this show might be ending soon. I'm not 100% certain. I think I might have heard that but this was all like this is a couple, show I've kind of seen a couple episodes here and there at the gym and it's kind of like um all about this town and they're having like you know dealing with like that legend of Sleepy Hollow kind of character Headless Horseman and they're all these kind of like demons and creatures that their one guy is kind of trying to fight and stuff like that but it has on here though deleted scenes this show here this show has got like a lot of awards and stuff and I remember when I was because this is another one I saw a lot of these at the gym and at first I didn't know what was going on because it kind of cuts back and forth between the character the same characters when when they're like kids and then when they're adults and I and I was like n totally didn't know what was going on at first it's a show called this is us it's about Mandy Moore and, you know, her husband's character and, and then their kids. And the one kid was adopted and it kind of cuts back and forth between, like, the few, you know, currently and then the past and kind of things that happen when they were kids. And then the one uh, woman is trying to lose weight and it's like her meeting this guy at the um, Weight Watchers type group. And it's, I, I don't know, it's a pretty interesting show here. It has on here, though, um, the after show on all episodes on here, talking about the episodes. But a pretty interesting show, pretty well done. I always like Mandy Moore as well. Uh, the next next one here from Fox as well is Modern Family, the complete eighth season. This is another one. I have not seen all the episodes of the show, but I don't know. I think it's actually a pretty fun show. I like Sarah Hyland a lot. And, um, you know, always been a fan of Ed O'Neill, you know, from Mayweather Children. I always think of him from that. Like, to me, I always think of him as Al Bundy. Like, because I, I don't know, because I always grew up watching that. So, like, I don't know, and that and, like, that movie Dutch. But this is basically about these uh, families, and it's kind of, like, done sort of documentary style where they, like, talk to the camera a lot. And it's kind of just them with, like, showing their their day-to-day -day, day stuff and, like, going on trips and kind of, like, having dramas and having problems and, like, weird type of problems in school and all that kind of stuff. This has on here... The so deleted scenes, alternate scenes, and a gag reel on this. And the last one here from Fox was um, Empire, the complete third season. This is another one. A lot of these shows, because um, you know Fox is always one of the TVs that's on at the gym. So I see a lot of these shows at the gym. And this is Empire, the complete third season. And this this season like had a lot of stuff going on because like one character it like was killed, and it's all kind of dealing with a lot of cover ups. It's all in the music industry, and a lot of like kind of heinous and bad stuff that's going on. You know. Um, the one son was shot and it's like all these kind of things and like the marriage is all falling apart between Taj P. Henson's character and Terrence Howard and it's all kind of problems going on they're doing everything they can to kind of hold it together and stuff but it's actually a pretty interesting well-made show they have another one too so I don't think it's come out on DVD yet called Star with Queen Latifah and I like that one as well this one has on here on um, uncut studio performances and studio sessions as features on this one the next one I got is one from um, High Octane Pictures it's a movie called Clown 
Clown Turgeist. And I believe this one, um, I'm not 100% sure on when the DVD releases. It's up on like um, Video On Demand and like Amazon and all that kind of stuff, I believe, right now. I'll keep you guys posted when I know for certain that you guys can get the DVD of this one. I don't know if it's going to be at Redbox or not. There was a trailer on here, too, for this one called like um, Cannibal Massacre or something, which looks amazing. I definitely cannot wait to see that one. Like, it looked like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of movie. It was like really crazy. This one, like I said, is called Clown Turgeist. And it's basically about like it's kind of a cool story because like this clown is going around killing people and he leaves these balloons with like a date and a time on them. So you kind of like you see them and you know that like someone is going to kill you at this exact time. So it's a very freaky thing about knowing someone's coming for you and like when it is and ha and how they're going to come for you and where they're going to come for you. And it's basically about like this one woman who gets these balloons and then like her friends are all killing all killing dying around her and it's like the police are trying to investigate and figure out exactly who is this that's going around and killing these people. It's kind of a cool, like I, like I said, crazy, you know, clown movie here. I always like these kind of clown type movies, especially because this is, like I said, it's kind of a different spin on the whole thing about kind of knowing when someone's kind of coming for you. It has on here, though, behind the scenes videos, deleted scenes, and auto co audio commentary track on this one, but a pretty fun one. Like I said, you guys can see this one on, like, demand and that kind of stuff now, and I'll let you know for certain when I know the DVDs available and like where you guys can get it and everything. Now uh, the next one here from Anchor Bay is a movie called Mind Blown. And I don't know if this one... I think this may have been on Sci-Fi Channel. I'm not 100% certain on that. And this is basically... Um, about a group of these people who are taken to like a research facility and all of them have kind of powers like telekinetic powers the power like to move things and like read minds and control things and all that kind of stuff and they're all put into this like thing that kind of links them all together looks like something sort of out of the matrix like they're all of them are kind of linked together in these chairs and then it's, it's they're kind of trying to do this sort of experiment where they can like harness all their energy together to kind of like um, destroy this like um, they, they, they're told it's like this mock city that they're trying to destroy like they kind of like mocked up something like with some buildings and stuff like that and sort of seeing if they can use their powers as like as like a weapon to kind of destroy these things but of course though when they go to do this they, they come to find out though that there's actually people in this and the guys are like oh no oh you, you, it's the wrong area it's the wrong area and stop and you can tell there might be something kind of weird here it's like does this facility or are they like you know in on this and like they're actually planning on actually destroying this town and that, you know, they actually know what they're doing here. But the one woman ends up, you know, escaping from this place and leaving from this testing place because she kind of felt like something was wrong. And she also felt like somebody in the town might have had some kind of abilities as well and was kind of stopping what was happening and kind of pushing the energy away. So she kind of goes there and it's kind of like her trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And then when she leaves, the people are kind of coming after her and trying to find her. It's kind of an interesting thing all about like controlling the weather and stuff like that through this weird weird type of experiment and like kind of trying to figure out you know what it all means on uh, the next one here and I'll put a link for where you guys can get these ones this is one called Wolves at the Door, and this is a Warner Brothers title. Um, and this is a pretty interesting thing. It was it's inspired by the you know the you know the 1969 Summer of Love murders, which was you know the Man the Charles Manson murders. You know they were all that he kind of or orchestrated, and like the Shannon Tate murder and all that kind of stuff. And this was done you know with it's sort of it's not the same exactly, but it's like some of what had happened sort of. And they kind of changed around some details and they kind of turned it into sort of a slasher kind of take on the whole thing. And it's it's about, you know, the the, Mur the Manson murders, and it's about, you know, this um, group of people who are in this house, and you kind of see that the, the it's like I said, it's done sort of like a um, home invasion type thing about them kind of trying to survive, and you know, it's a very brutal, like crazy type movie about what has happened, and I said, it's like I said, it's based pretty much on the Shannon Tate situations and stuff here. The director of this one directed, um, I believe he directed... Annabelle and a bunch of other stuff as well so it's kind of a crazy like take on the whole thing and I don't think there really had been a, a movie exactly that focused on this one as much as it did because they done one that focused on like Charles Manson himself and stuff but never one that was mainly on the whole murder about the Shannon Tate house and the next one here is one called um, Within and this is about this family um, and I kind of like this because it was like without spoiling anything it was kind of like a movie that I really like from the 70s that I talk about a lot it kind of was like that a little bit but this family moves into this new house and like there's weird stuff happening it's not like a paranormal type situation but like things are happening where like things in the house 
like food is being eaten, things are being moved around, like lights are getting turned on, and you see though, very early on, that like someone is standing there, but you don't know, you know, what exactly is going on here, because like you see someone standing there, like lurking around in this house and stuff, but you don't really know exactly why and how, what what's happening here. But it's and, and they also have like they kind of give hints to who it could be too, because like there's this weird guy who's helping to help like fix the house up and stuff for them, like do work and stuff. This was kind of of a creepy thing it kind of reminded me of that one movie too that came out a couple years back with Jeremy Sisto called Hangman it kind of had that vibe to it as well but pretty well acted as well in here um I don't know I, I like this one it was an interesting kind of take on the whole thing like I said it wasn't like a ghost type thing but it was like someone messing around and they're trying to figure out exactly what it all means but I, I kind of like this one uh, this one though this was amazing this was a really really well done um, documentary called Haunters the art of the uh, the art of the scare this is all about I, and I love these kind of things that are about like haunted houses and stuff and this is about people who run haunted houses and one of the haunted houses that they focus mainly on a good majority of it is actually in San Diego so it was kind of cool it's this crazy haunted house where like it's in this neighborhood and it's in this person's house and they do like and he films the whole thing when people go through and they like he scares them to death and like these all these crazy stuff that he does but the whole documentary is on haunted houses scare actors like this one woman who's like a, been scare acting for years and they're kind of talking to her about like so it kind of talks about the bad side of it as well like how she's been injured or people kind of attacked her her and like punched her and like it talks about a whole lot of stuff and uh, it also focuses too on like the relationship between like married couples who like are putting on the haunted houses and how the wife is has a really difficult time dealing with the husband putting so much effort into the whole thing and spending so much money and it's a really interesting well done thing like I love these kind of haunted house type things and I you know it just to me it was really cool to see all these different ones a lot of them were out in the California area so it's cool to see all these ones that were kind of all around here, like the LA, um, they show like Knott's Berry Farm, they show some at Universal, a whole bunch of different stuff, but definitely if you like these kind of like haunted house type haunted documentaries that focus a lot on the people and all about like putting them on and all the effort and work that it goes into it, definitely check this one out. Like I said, really, really cool documentary. Uh, the next one here from Cynodyme is a movie here called uh, The Body Tree. And this was an interesting one. Like, I hadn't seen a movie with this exact story before. And it was about these group of these friends who go to Russia. Uh, I think it was like, um, yeah, Serbia, Rus the Russian Serbia area. And because um, they were kind of honoring the memory of their one friend who died. But there's like a lot of mystery behind, between how she died because like their one friend is now in jail and they kind of are blaming him for the murder. And no one knows exactly for sure what had happened. It's like a very mysterious thing thing to it but they all go there and they're told to go there because, because the girl's parents want her, all the friends to kind of come out here and like kind of remember this girl's life. But when they get out there, they find out the parents are dead and they're buried and they're doing a very weird like ritual with um, this doll and they have the girl who died's hair on the doll and they're like doing this kind of weird like shaman type ritual to the doll. And then when they do this, the friends had no idea this was happening and they're kind of weirded out and freaked out by the whole thing. And then right after they do this, odd things start to happen there where they're where they are and like they don't know what exactly what to do and like kind of like things are happening to people and like they're getting kind of controlled and stuff it's kind of a creepy weird like i said different kind of take that i haven't seen before with this kind of kind of concept that was going on here but a pretty creepy movie here like i said i want the one called the body tree nobody leaves and the next one here from a company called breaking glass um pictures i love this movie this is a movie called bnb and um, it's basically about this uh, couple, this gay couple who are recently gotten married, and they went to a um, this, like this small uh, B and B. And originally, when they went there a year before, then the story like, you know talks about what had happened before. You see like a newspaper article. They were denied being able to have. Um, like I think it was I don't know if they were a lot not allowed to stay there or they were denied to have a single bed because like because they were gay and the guy was very Christian and like didn't like the whole thing and he had all kinds of problems with them and like they ended up you know going to court over the whole thing about like how they were mistreated and everything so they come back a year later after the court and everything and they're like oh we're gonna stay here now so they go to stay here and it becomes like a huge thing but when they go there 
uh, there's this weird guy and they don't know if he's like a supporter of theirs or he's somebody that's against them because they're gay and he's a guy from Russia and they're kind of one guy is really weirded out by the whole thing and when they're there odd things start to happen and like their phone signals you know get messed up but then there's a whole plot here too with the owner of the son the who owns the VNB son and who comes out to them and says that he's gay he doesn't know how to tell his father and he's going to be disowned so there's this whole thing with the son going off with the Russian guy and then like things really fall apart and get really bad I don't want to say too much more about the whole thing but there was a lot of twists in this movie like a lot of whole lot of things I wasn't expecting happening the acting was amazing and it's like every he was really good. Um, the one guy who owned the owned the BNB was in, I think, like Alien Three and a bunch of different movies. This has on here though cast and crew interviews, outtakes, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, so a bunch of different stuff on this one. But definitely look up the trailer for this one, guys. I thought this was actually really pretty good. And the next ones here I got from um, Umbrella Entertainment, and these ones are Australian releases. But these Blu-rays here are all region free, so you guys can play these ones no matter what you know player you have. This one here, I love the cover on this. It's Stephen King's Cat's Eye. This is like an anthology film. This is one of those anthology movies too. I remember since it was PG-13, I always was able to watch this one as a kid, and I've always absolutely loved this one. A really early uh, Drew Barrymore film, and it's basically about this cat going around, and it's like three uh, different stories. One of them is this guy on the leg. The other one is a guy who's trying to quit smoking and like they do all these crazy things to him because he goes to this kind of clinic where they, you know, try and make you stop smoking and they put his wife in this kind of electric room and stuff. It was a real crazy one. My favorite segment, though, was this weird little creature living in the wall of Drew Barrymore's room that comes out at night starts messing around and doing things and basically trying to kill Drew Barrymore and like the cat like notices him and it's like weird things are happening around the house. This is just such a cool anthology movie. It has on here an exclusive interview with Robert Hayes who was the you know on the segment on the ledge and that's about like 30 minutes and he talked about some pretty interesting stuff about like how he got the role and like his take on you know if he was a fan of Stephen King and just a whole bunch of stuff. There's also an interview here with the animal trainer as well because like you know there was a lot of stuff that the cat and stuff was doing in here that they had to train it to do but just a really really great one great picture on this one like i said too really love the artwork on this release the next one here Umbrella Entertainment as well is uh, Rob Zombie's Devil's Rejects. It's another one that has really great cover. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is an exclusive cover for this release, I believe, but just a really cool one. Lisa, for, I just can say I've never seen this one for sure, you know, this this cover. This is basically, if you haven't seen this one, this is a follow up to House of a Thousand Corpses. And like, I kind of go between which one I like better, House of a Thousand Corpses or Devil's Rejects, but both of them I actually really like. I feel like Devil's Rejects, they kind of like had more money to it. And it was a much bigger story because the House of a Thousand Corpses was kind of like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of thing, all set in a house. And this one was about, you know, the characters all on the run from the law. You know, they basically the house was stormed, you know, Otis and Baby and then Spaulding's character and they're on the run from the law going around trying to kind of just get away from everybody. And it's like, you know, their mother was, you know, taken in by the cops and they're kind of like questioning her and like torturing her and yelling at her and stuff like that about like, where are they? Do you have any idea where they are? And I love Ken Foree's character in this one as well. This one has a bunch of different features on here. It has, um... You know, a um, bunch of different interviews, blooper reel, uh, deleted scenes, uh, stuff. The Morris Green Show, which was like the show that was they played inside of the film. But this is just such a great gritty film. And like I said too, love the artwork on this one as well. This one here, this was from the guy, the same director who did um, the Canon documentary. This is the one thing that he did a couple years before that one. This one is called uh, Not Quite Hollywood. And this, like I said, this one, all these Blu-rays are region free. And this is basically all about talking about the movies from the 70s and 80s that were filmed in uh, Australia and kind of like the big boom of making films in Australia at that period of time. They made a whole bunch of ones. They also had a lot of big actors too. American actors kind of go to Australia to make films. I feel like one of my favorite ones that was made in Australia around that time was Dead End Drive-In. That was just such a great one. And, and uh, Umbrella Entertainment too has been releasing a lot of those kind of stuff. They did like... Um, the uh, Road Games with Jamie Lee Curtis they released. They just released uh, Dark Age. 
you know, with the killer uh, crocodile. So this is basically a documentary, though, know, interviewing a lot of people who worked on the films. Quentin Tarantino's in a, a lot of this documentary. It also has tons and tons of extra features on here. Also, like, extra um, bonus documentaries on here, as well as, like, three or four different bonus documentaries on here. Theatrical trailers, audio interviews, all extended interviews, commentary track. So tons and tons of stuff on here. Really great. If you guys like documentaries, you know, about, you know, films and, like, you know, especially ones that were, like, like exploitation films, definitely check this out. Uh, the next one here, now these ones are both, um, you guys have to have a region free player for this one because these ones are all region locked, like in the PAL format, PAL format. So you have to have like an all region uh, DVD player for these ones. This one is here called uh, Taste of Australia. And I always love these kind of food shows. And it was cool to see one of these, you know, from Australia. And it's basically about this woman who goes around to like, um, all different areas all around Australia. She goes to like the market, she goes to like restaurants, she goes to small farms where people are like farming certain items. And then it kind of cuts between the places that she goes. She does recipes with like some of the items that she's or like the, the eggs or certain types of things that she shows in the areas and she kind of cooks recipes with them. Like I said, I always love these kind of shows and cool to see one of these things, you know, from Australia. And this one has, you know, um, it's a three disc set as well for this one. So I think it's like 12 episodes or something like that. 12 or 15 episodes of this one on here. Uh, this one here, now this is another one that's region locked too. So you need a region free player for this. And this is um, Red Christmas. And this is actually a pretty cool, you know, um, movie starring Dee Wallace. And it's basically about her family getting together for Christmas. And there's some sort of a crazy, like, masked killer that's going around, like, killing the family. And they're all, like, trapped in the house. And it's kind of them trying to figure out, too, who is this person? What is this thing that's coming after them? And try and survive the night. And it's like a real you know, gory, uh, throwback, like, 80s-style slasher film here. This has on here a commentary track with the director, behind the scenes, a deleted scene, uh, you know, uh, as well as a theatrical trailer on this one. But a pretty cool throwback slasher film. And the next one here, one you guys know is available from um, Vega Baby, and it's a movie called The Legend of Ben Hall. This is based on a true story. This is the DVD-Blu-ray combo here. This is basically about Ben Hall, who is, like, this, um, who's always kind of one of the most wanted men in the world for going around and like robbing you know, he had like a big gang of people and at this point you know most of the gang members had either been killed or kind of all gone missing and he's kind of like hiding out because like everyone like the police are always trying to find him because of the things that he had done and all the robberies and the things that he'd stolen and stuff but this is kind of about him kind of getting brought back into the whole thing and then like to, to try and get enough money to go and you know to go to America so it's kind of becomes a whole big thing about you know them all kind of coming the police all trying to come after him again and you know since he's popping back up again and he's like really like they're on this trail and stuff but pretty interesting really really good production guys on this one really well made movie here has on here though a making of a director's commentary a historian commentary and then you know trailers and teasers on this one this one here from MVD is a pretty interesting um, anthology kind of found footage feeling sort of um, a lot of it's done through the computer as well some of the segments it's a movie called Dark Web and this stars you know Lawrence Harvey who was in the Human Centipede 2 like he is such a cool dude like you know I, I Human Centipede 2 like he really made that movie I met him a number of years back he's a really really nice guy very different you know in real life but he's like this guy in here who's talking on the computer to this woman and you can kind of know that he's trying to plan something you don't exactly know what it is and it's deals with like this weird website that he's on talking to this woman then it kind of cuts to like these anthology horror type stories and like they all like some of them are all crazier than the other ones but then it cuts back to him and um you know about the woman who comes over and exactly what's going on here but like his stuff was great like I, like I said he he really makes this movie he's very very cool and there's some really crazy like segments in here in this one if you guys like you know anthology kind of stories here definitely check this one out uh this one here from um wild eye releasing is one called black ghost and this is um it's basically about this woman whose girlfriend had died and she wants to kind of like um kind of bring her back or like see if she can kind of 
get her presence back or like kind of talk to her again. So she goes and does all these kind of like weird rituals and stuff to try and she goes out in the middle of nowhere to do these rituals to try and bring her back. And there's some really creepy stuff with these like weird like creepy ghosts and stuff that she's seeing. Like they did this interesting kind of effects to the way they looked when she's like kind of bringing them back in there and then she's kind of like haunted by these weird entities because you know when you go and mess around with all this kind of stuff you know it's not going to go well at all and of course it doesn't so all these kind of people are kind of coming after her and haunting her for messing around with the, all this like occult stuff and it also cuts back and forth too to some of the stuff before she died and you find, find out more and more stuff about that as well has on here though behind the scenes interviews and trailers on this one uh, this one here from unearth films is a movie called lilith lilith's hell and this is and this has um the director, um, you know, Rogério Dariato, I, I never say his name right, but, you know, who directed uh, Cannibal Holocaust and uh, House on the Edge of the Park and a bunch of great, I believe he did House on the Edge of the Park, but I always really liked the stuff that he did, and he actually is in this movie, like, throughout the movie a little bit. It's about these filmmakers who wanted to do a movie and kind of, like, make it, like, be very super, super realistic and as, like, real feeling as, it, as they can. So they kind of talk to him about, like, how to try and do it, and he kind of passes off and doesn't really listen, and he, he kind of, like, talks to him a little bit do like interviews and stuff but then he you know the friend goes to Italy to kind of uh, I think I believe it was Italy to make this this film and he's kind of like crazy like he's like oh it's got to be as realistic as it can we got to make sure this is really like real we have to like to pull no punches here with this and he's like the process of making the whole thing but of course though something goes wrong with one of the actors and like someone goes crazy and all these kind of bad stuff starts to happen and they're kind of like trapped in this location that they're in it's kind of them trying to survive and stuff with all this nut stuff going Going on and they have a pretty cool set in this that is because you know since it was supposed to be a movie they were making they're like kind of trapped in the set in the in the area that they're in has on here though interviews with cast and crews interview with you know Rogario uh, Dialto you know like I said the director of Cannibal Holocaust but a pretty interesting one here and the last one here I'll put a link for where you guys can get this one it's a movie called um, Baron von Lego's Halloween Spookathon this is like a um, done in like real like uh, like a thing that was like taped on TV in the 80s and it was like a special you know a Halloween type special um, where like um there was like it was all this kind of history behind it that like the people who appear in the Halloween special had died and stuff. So it's all done like it was something that was taped off of TV. So it has like real VHS kind of quality to it and stuff like that. And it kind of cuts this crazy weird clown and it like doing these weird things. And it cuts to some ant some stories like one was like a hunter out in the middle of the woods and then like uh, something kind of weird happens to him. One is like a weird sitcom kind of TV show about this pumpkin face guy. But it's kind of a fun if you. You guys like things done to look like something out of the 80s like a, with, with a real like found footage it's not really found footage but more like something that aired on tv like taped off tv like so it has like all of the graded generations and stuff to it uh definitely check this out it also has on here uh one of the segments in 1080p so you can see what it looked like before they put all the filters and stuff in it to give it the vhs look as well as a commentary track on here with the directors the next one here too from um this one that you guys know is available from time life and this is the Carol burnett show this is the lost episodes one that has um carol's lost christmas episode so this is like from the first four seasons of the show like some early Christmas special ones so if you guys are interested in this one this is a, the Carol Burnett show like I said with the you know Christmas special episodes on this one but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video thanks again for watching subscribing and I'll see you guys later